Let's turn your sequel to KQL in seconds next on Tales from the Field. Step three, you grow hard about what you want to be. Step four, everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's going to be a good day. This is your first time finding us over at Tales from the Field. Give us a like and give us a subscribe. We have a community roundtable every Tuesday where we feature content from bloggers, video creators, people from the Azure data community. Also, we have an MS Tech Bits. We drop at least once a week on Wednesday. You're watching one of those right now. Okay, now let's get on to the content you came here for. Azure Data Explorer, sometimes known as Kusto, is one of the most powerful services that we have. And in my opinion, it's one that customers don't use nearly enough. Kusto runs Azure. Underneath the covers, we are using this to consume all of the log files, all of the telemetry, all of the data. If you're using log analytics or anything like that, you're using Kusto, again, also known as Data Explorer. So why should you use it? It is an incredibly powerful tool that can consume real-time data. It can consume multiple formats, and it can take that data and spit it out in live connections very, very quickly. Anything that we report on in Azure utilizes this. Imagine being able to take this and utilize it for your business. If we trust it with petabytes of data that are generated for all Azure customers daily, there's probably some really great scenarios where you could take your real-time data sets and deliver those very quickly. But there's a catch. It uses KQL. And I hear you. The first thing I thought was, I've got to learn another language. Well, that's what I'm going to show you today. There is a shortcut where I can take my T-SQL and I can generate KQL immediately. So it allows me to be able to shortcut that learning curve and begin to use my data sets in KQL in Cousteau in Azure Data Explorer very, very quickly. I don't just want to tell you about it. I want to show you. So let's head over to the demo. So here we are in SSMS. And again, I didn't know how to be able to answer the uh, question I want to answer with KQL. So I, I did it with T-SQL. You see, Bob Ward and I were having a discussion at SQL Bits, and we were talking about this data set I have, which is retrosheets.org. And it is every play-by-play -play event that has occurred in every game of baseball from 19... 21 until uh, 2016. The reason it stops at 2016 is I am a diehard Chicago Cubs fan, and that's the last time we won the World Series. And so baseball stops for me. I know, I know. I need to update my data set. But this is what I've got right now. So I knew how to solve this with T-SQL. And so what I did was I wrote out all the T-SQL to be able to figure out this problem. And, and here it is. And this is what I'm going to take, and I'm going to turn this into KQL. And we're going to start by going over to the Azure Data Explorer Studio. Uh, there is a desktop tool, but we're going to use the um, Web Studio. I've already got my baseball stats data loaded up. You can see I, I've loaded this from my Parquet uh, file. And no more delays. The way I'm going to translate this is I'm going to use the explain command. Uh, let's start out by doing maybe a select count so we understand here's the number of rows that we're actually working with in our um, in our baseball stats. So this is the number of events that we're going to be scanning every single time. Select count from baseball underscore stats. Uh, and you can see I, I got a command instantaneously. I throw that out. And if I run this KQL, um, I get a little over 12 million rows. And in 0 0.077 seconds, ridiculously fast scanning through this data. So now that I've got this, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start taking my T-SQL commands. I'm going to paste them over one at a time. And slowly, we're going to answer this question to understand what team has had the most um, triple plays executed against them. So let's take my T-SQL. And the first thing I'm going to do, I need to start breaking this up because the way the events work, they're based off the home team. And I need to get the home team and I need to get the away team. So I'm going to run this. And you can see very quickly. Um, I'm able to get the home team and the number of triple plays that occur from them. But again, this is misleading. I need to dive in this a little bit more. So I need to separate this out to if you're a home team or if you're playing in an away game. So let me take this T-SQL. This is going to get all my information that I need for us to be able to break down. And it's not perfect, right? You can see right here, this string null, it's a little bit of an error. It just needs two double quotes. Some simple fix, two double quotes right there. Um, and But... 99% of the time, this works amazingly and it's perfect. So I'm going to run this 
And now you can see I've got a breakdown of all my teams, all my home games by year, whether the triple play is for or against, because that's really important. And I want to create a table in SQL. I'd use a temp table. I'm just going to create a table uh, and I'm going to use a simple code dot set TP home. I've got an arrow and uh, a line and you can see it instantaneously. Bam. There's my there's my table. I've got the size, the compression ratio, the number of rows that are within it. And what I can do is I can now run my next query that's going against TP home, which would have been my temp table. I output my KQL and uh, I'm going to do this now for the away team. So let, let me run this real quick so that way you can see that this is indeed the away team. I've got to fix that, uh, my, my string issue. And there's all my data for away. So now I can make this my, my TP away table. So I've got my home data. I've got my away data. Let's run through this now and create it. Bam, once again, very, very quick. We've got our next temp table created. Now, what I need to do is I need to union this data together. Uh, how do I union in KQL? Well, I, I don't know, but I can tell you how I would union in T-SQL. And all I need to do is take my T-SQL statement. Now, remember, I can't use the temp table names. I need to use the table objects that I've got in KQL. Um, but there's my T-SQL union. And if I run this, I'm going to get the output command very, very quickly in KQL. And what I will be able to do is I'll be able to then take uh, my, my output for my union command. And I'm going to, oh, hold on a second. Uh, yep. Okay. There we go. Uh, I'm, I'm going to run this, get the output for my command. And then very quickly, I can see this is what my union looks like. And now I can actually take this and I can create a results table with this union in there. Again, temp tables uh, over in, in my SQL server, right? So there we go. I've got this could all be put into one script to be able to be an ETL operation. I've now got my results table and now I'm very, very close to being able to get all the information I need uh, for the far and away. So if I begin to take a look at this and I just throw my T-SQL statement here to be able to get for my final results, let's do a sum and a group by. So that way we can figure this out. And I can see there's there's my teams, there's my cubbies, uh, 24 triple plays against, but I can also see pretty close down, 21 triple plays against. So what I really need to do, what I really wanna do is I wanna understand, is this for or against? So this is a big deal. It's a big deal to understand, is a triple play done against you or is it done for you? So I'm not going to go into this super in depth, but if a triple hit play happens against you and against your team, it's bad. Everybody's out. Um, not good. But if it happens for you, it's a good thing. We're all really happy about it. The crowd goes wild. And yeah, let's just continue on. Let's look at the data. All right. So now I'm able to go back and I'm going to look at my KQL. I'm going to create our final table. And so I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it into there. I'm, I'm going to say, uh, let's recreate this and remember our command. It is dot set. And then I'm going to type TP underscore final because that's going to be the table name I'm going to use. And then I will run this command very quickly, create this. And then it wouldn't be SQL if I didn't have one crazy last SQL command, right? Uh, I'm going to do a self join on the table so that way I can get the number of events that have occurred. I'm going to do a ratio. I'm going to convert an integer value to a decimal. I'm going to do a left. So I only pull back a certain number of those decimal statements. And if you look at that, we get the KQL back just fine for this. And this is going to give us those final results uh, that we are looking for. So if I take a look at this, Philly's doing great, uh, apparently, and as far as triple plays go up until 2016, the Chicago, Chicago Cubs uh, looks like we're sitting there at about 53%, yeah, uh, 53 point, uh, or 53.3%. That's the number of triple plays that we have. So better that we have more for us than against us. I'll take it. So what did we learn today? 
We learned how to translate SQL to KQL, incredibly useful tool. One thing to keep in mind that this is for an internalized data set that we have that is specifically in a format that will work. If you have a whole bunch of nested JSON strings, you're going to have to explode those out and you're going to have to convert those to a format like Parquet before you can utilize it. When you write your T-SQL statements, you're going to want to utilize the name of the object that you have created in Data Explorer. It's not going to understand it has to alienate. Uh, alias it. So I, I was using the example of TP home, TP awake, and TP triple play, uh, TP results, TP final. If I had had one of those tables as TP final results, uh, I would need to change that to a name that actually corresponded with what I have in KQL. All right. You know where we like to keep this going in the comments. Was this helpful? Is this interesting? Are you using Kusto or Data Explorer? Uh, we want to hear from you. Take care, everybody out there, and we hope to see you again with us on Tales from Phil. Every Bye. day, call it replication. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.